Hiya, and welcome back to Roads Yet Traveled, the game that teaches us that, hmm, hmm, that the best method to ensure that, that the best method for an FVN love interest to ensure that they get what they want is to pull a, is to pull a Monica. From Doki Doki Literature Club. Anyways, so, I'm an idiot. I think that much is obvious. I genuinely have no clue what I'm, what I'm doing. So, as such, here's what we're going to do because, uh, I don't know which save goes to which. I don't know which save goes to which. I'm going to assume that the, uh... Let me let me check the patch notes. Because I read patch notes for fun. I think I think the newly added day was day 11. Yeah, I I need to Oh, okay. Yeah. I need to organize stuff better, which is why, on stream, I'm just going to uh, rework all these save files. All the save files. We're going to start fresh. Right there. And which route are we starting off with for this update? I think we could just do this entire update tonight. Oh, see, I'm... I'm on a laptop. Yeah, I'm, I'm on a laptop, so it's just as simple as hovering over and hitting the delete key. I believe our guest here should retire for now, as should I. <laughs> Although... Hiya. Now that I'm on this floor, I could check the labs. Never mind me, though. Please have a good night, you two. He offers a small nod before turning to walk away. Good night, sir. Good night, Tyr. He only gets a few paces down the hallway before something stops him and he turns back to face us. Oh, I had almost forgotten. Tucker? The captain would like to have a word with you. Excuse me? Surely I heard him wrong, right? Right? But if Marilyn's expression is anything to go by, I didn't. I'm starting to get a bit worried, as is Tyr, it seems. Dr. Seno, are you quite alright? Unfortunately, Merowin.exe has stopped working. If the issue persists, please contact Tucker for further assistance. I wasn't expecting this at all. Doc looks... dumbfounded. Tugging at his jacket seems to draw him back from a stupor. But what I... Uh, Professor Seto, surely you just mean she wants a report, correct? No, I said what I meant, Doctor. She believes it's time she personally addressed our guest here. Are you suggesting a problem with that arrangement? Ah, no, I just... Are you sure she doesn't want a report? I'd happily head over to her office now and... Doctor, please. I got the news from her personally. Stop acting so difficult about this. There's nothing out of the ordinary about a captain wanting to inspect members of her crew. And our guest here. Anyways, it's about time they met. Merowin still looks distraught, but he doesn't make another attempt to retort. Now, Tucker, I was told that she'd reach out to you in the morning and give you a time for your meeting. Considering that her office is outside of the bounds of your current confinement... She's granting you access to take the service elevators up to the required floor. Now, I don't know what you've heard about her, but please remember that she's very busy. The fact she managed to find the time to meet with you should come as a very generous invitation. So please, don't be late. I'm just going to move that there. With that, he offers us a curt nod and starts walking back down the hallway. Well, I guess I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Merowin, however, still seems to be taking this news... Mm. Not particularly well. 
I go to pull on his jacket again, but he snaps out of it and turns to me before I can reach him. Oh, um, Tucker, I... Well, I suppose there are a few things that we'll need to discuss tonight. So, he's serious, huh? You have to go meet with the captain? It would seem so. He takes off his glasses and rubs his tired eyes. I can't help but feel that he may be taking this out to be the worst... Make, making this out to be worse than it really is. I mean, I've heard she's strict, but I think... But just meeting her? How bad could it be? Well, I'll be sure that you have everything you need for tomorrow, and, um, it should be fine. I'm sure it will be nothing. In fact, maybe this will be good. His usual mirth comes out again as he straightens himself out. Perhaps you can get better access to the station. Or maybe more assistance for your medical research. Or maybe... Maybe some new clothes... Yes. Maybe some new clothes. Um, right. Of course. With the right approach, tomorrow could prove to be very fortuitous, Tucker. He's not making me any less worried, but he's right that I could really get some great perks if she ends up liking me. Although, it seems like even Tear is cautious around her. Eh, I've dealt with bad teachers and stringent officer worker office workers before. I'm sure this will be fine. Still a bit stunned, we head over to Rune's door and wait for the tardy captain. For the tardy carrying. Ah. Eventually we hear sluggish and offbeat footsteps approaching. An exhausted looking rune crawls his way down the hallway. Only noticing us watching him as he gets within the last few feet of us. Uh, oh, uh, uh. Hey. <laughs> Hello, director. I hope all is well with you. I was just making sure Tucker got into their room all right. You'll be fine from here, yes? Oh, yeah! N no problem! He tries to lean against the wall, but finds himself sliding down it slightly. Merowyn chuckles and excuses himself, wishing us both a good night. Yes, Rune did get a sprite update, and I love it! I forgot about the teddy bear! Finally returning to the warmth of the bedroom, I flop on my bed and just... And just try as hard as I can to sink into the mattress. I have no idea what I can do about this meeting tomorrow. Shouldn't I get some kind of briefing? Or like, at least some advice? I'm surprised Merowyn didn't leave me with any parting words or really anything about the subject. He probably trusts me. Perhaps too much. Maybe I should have... Oh shit! Oh, shit. Uh, 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 vocalist, uh, thank you for the subs. Just subscribe to Tier 1. Subscribe for three months. Just, woo! Woohoo! Bud? Are you okay? If you want to go to bed, you can. I, I can just turn off the lights. Hmm? No, thanks. Sorry. I'm just a bit nervous about tomorrow. Tomorrow? What's to- Let me just- Knock, knock, knock. Our eyes shoot to the door as I hear some boots shuffle outside. Rune timidly walks over and checks it, only to find himself looking up at Maruk. Uh, would you like- to come in, Maruk. Oh shit, I've been talking like Rune like all day today. Goddamn. Rune's met with a sharp stare as Maruk thrusts a tray full of food into his arms. Here. And, uh, Tucker. I heard about what you have to do tomorrow, so just, like, don't mess it up. And you! Make sure he's ready for it, alright? Don't be late! Yeah, I know, Maruk. Is that all? <laughs> I'm serious. Don't. Be. Late. Just gotta do that. Just the whole... I want to give Maruk a different voice. I want to give him a different voice, because, like, I want them all to have unique voices, and I have no clue what voices I gave them previously. Because, like, how it currently works is, like, for Merowyn, I just, like, 
deepen my voice a little bit, so now I'm talking like that. For Rune and for Tucker, I use my natural speaking voice. For Maruk, I'm thinking something like, I'm serious. Don't be late. Like giving him a more gay voice. And with that, he walks off. Rune just looks confused as he turns to me. Cause baby, now we got bad blood. Yeah, we used to be mad, love. Just take a look at what you've done. Baby, now, cause baby, now we got bad blood. Hey! Put some twang in Maruk, okay. Um, am I supposed to know what he meant by that? Sorry, I don't, didn't think I got any messages about you today. Hiya. Hmm? Oh no. Uh, he's just being his lovable self. He's nervous because Tyr came by and told me that I have a meeting with the captain tomorrow. Crash noises. Rune freezes and stumbles forward, scattering everything across the floor. My dear! Looking to see if anything can be salvaged, I'm disappointed to find most of it is just a mess. Well, <laughs> I think the salad is still probably good. Bud? Looking at Rune, I see that he's still trapped motionless in his thoughts. Bud? Hello? Getting up, I try to catch his eye and see that he looks at me ever so slightly. D you have a what? Jeez, yeah, I'm nervous too, but calm down, please. Consciousness regained, Rune paces around the room, muttering under his breath while I rescue what's left of my dinner. Like, literally, it's it's just all like... <laughs> stop! I'm gonna drop my croissant. Not content to watch this for very long, I shouted to try and stop him. Hey, hey, listen. How about you come and sit down and we can, I don't know, talk about this? Surely you have some advice, right? A advice? Yes, like, you've met her before, yeah? You know what she's like? Well, yeah, but I don't think I'm the right caring to ask that. Maybe Merwin is still up? We could ask him, and... Rune? Just calm down. Okay? I'm sure I can ask Merwin tomorrow, but maybe for now you can just... Tell me about her. He takes a few seconds to regain his composure. His eyes go from a bleary smeared green to an emerald point as they center on me once again. Y you're right. I I'm sorry. What did you want again, though? Hmm. Uh, can you tell me anything about her? I think I only know her name and title, and even that is shaky. Captain Skrell? Bell. And yeah, she's the captain. What does that mean, though? What does the captain do? Well, I think she does everything a captain does. Okay, what does a captain do? Which is... Uh, oh, uh, let's see. She pilots the ship. Like, making sure we don't go below the red line. It was poor brain cells. Leave him be. 
his anxiety his anxiety is activated his he activated and you're on who she also manages schedules for uh, the teams on big projects I think she deals with the bosses back home although that could really be anyone up here up there the who um, the Sarknos conglomerate, they run everything here. D did you not know that? That has somehow not come up. Although you did mention that someone paid for your arm, so it does make sense. Right! Uh, yeah, so they manage some of the projects here, hire the crew, and maintain the station. And they pay my salary. <laughs> oh God. God damn. God damn. <clears throat> Cryptid dog, cryptid dog. If, if you're watching this, cryptid. If you're if you're watching this, that is my favorite line. That is now my favorite line. This is now my favorite line. But right, uh, yeah. So they manage some of the projects here, hire the crew, and maintain the station, and they pay my salary. And you said back home and Tleo. Um, they're based on Lyo, yeah, but they kinda work out of everywhere. I think. I'm sorry, Tucker, I only worked for the Lion Branch. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, we got a bit off topic. So the captain, do you know her first name? Or should I just call her by her title? I don't know her name, sorry. Whenever I see her, she, uh... Well, she usually just talks at me, and I listen... And then when she walks away, I reply, so I think just calling her Captain is probably a good, good idea. That's not the best of help, but it's better than nothing. Although I'm a bit worried about his interactions with her now. But I have to worry about myself first for now. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. Ah. Uh. Thank you for the gift sub vocalist to Damien Dason forty five. Vocalist, you've gifted five. G oh shit! Another one to you on. Ah oh, shit! Ah oh, shit! But I have to worry about myself for now. <laughs> okay, that's uh. Helpful. Ah, god damn. Vocalist. Just, wow. Just, round round of applause for vocalist. Just, just round of applause. That makes seven gift subs to the channel. Thank you for the gift subs. Congrats. Uh, yeah. Vocalist, the fucking MVP. Woohoo! Okay, that's, uh... Helpful. Can you think of anything else? Um, well, I think she's always busy. Well, like I said, whenever I see her, she always tells me what she needs and walks off. So maybe let her talk first? And just answer if she wants you to. And another thing. When she talks to you... I wouldn't interrupt. I've heard her yell at crew who spoke out of line. That's worrying, but all right, that's actually a good note at least. Well, thanks, Rune. Uh, how about if you think of anything else, you can tell me in the morning, yeah? I don't know when my meeting is yet, Bo. We should still have time to talk. Woohoo! Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. 
I can do that for sure. Here, let me... A wet squelch from the reins of my soup brings him to an abrupt stop. Uh, oh. Um, let me clean this up. He heads into the back, taking care to not step on anything again and rummages through his closet. Hey, you need any help, bud? No! N no, just, uh, relax and enjoy your dinner. Looking at my salad bowl that's been empty for the past few minutes, I just put it aside. I'm glad I still have some time to figure out how to deal with the captain tomorrow. I'd hate to be going into this completely blind. Maybe I should ask Merwin after all. Surely he knows her the best, right? Although I think Rune might know more than he thinks. Maybe he'll have something to share tomorrow. Laying down a familiar poke at my side distracts me with a hint of nostalgia. Reaching into my pocket, I pull out my phone. I had almost forgotten about it. <laughs> a monitor, huh? How does this thing work anyways? Hitting the power button doesn't seem to work, which is a bit worrying. I try what Merwin showed me earlier, and the screen jumps to life, a bright menu dancing at my fingertips. But now I'm a bit lost. While everything is translated, some of the translations are... confusing at best. What the hell is a situation button for? Rolling onto my side, I see a thick trunk of legs in front of me. For the second time tonight, Rune's staring at me with his mouth agape. Where did you get that? Huh? Oh, Doc gave it to me. It's pretty cool. Although I'm not entirely sure how to use it. He still looks stunned, but he snaps back much faster than before. Uh, I could probably help you. If you want me to. Oh, sure. Throwing my legs off the side of the bed, I pat the space next to me. It takes him a minute, but he eventually sits next to me. I hand him my phone, and he rolls it over a few times in his paw. This is pretty impressive. I haven't had a chance to see any human technology before. Well, I know this is the only piece you brought with you, but it's still very nice. And you said it was similar to a monitor? Yeah, it could send messages, play music, display information, all that stuff. So, um, why did you need a monitor then? Well, I... That's a good point, actually. I guess I wouldn't have service, sure, but why retrofit it with a monitor when it worked perfectly fine last I had it? My heart skips a beat. What if it's broken, or whatever tier did to it made it so I can't access what was on it? I notice Rune staring at me expectantly. S Sorry, bud. I was just thinking about what you said. I don't know what, why they did that, but I, I need to figure it out. I had things on there I would really like to be able to see again. Like information. Uh, yeah, but it won't turn on anymore. Look, I turn the phone over in his paws and hit the power button a few times. He mimics the action and inspects it closer. I could take a look at it, but Tear is the expert on. Things like this. So I think you should ask him. He's the one who installed all of this anyways. Right, right. I think I'll try and do that. Do that. Would you still like me to show you how to use it? Yeah, I would. Thank you. He smiles and opens the monitor attachment once again. Uh, oh, wow. This isn't a half bad model. I kind of figured you'd get some service model or like an older operating system at least. I guess Tyr had an extra one laying around. A anyways, uh, here, I might need you to translate, but I can help you navigate. Oh, right, so what should I do first? Well, let's see if we can change the settings. It's usually the top left button. Hitting the button that says Operations, another menu quickly comes into view. Ah, that looks about right. Um, try messaging, try messing with that slider there. Moving the slider left and right quickly reveals that the projection can quickly swap between colors on the fly. Finally! I can afford one of those cool RGB devices everyone seems to seem to have back home. Oh, this is great. What color do you think I should pick? He stares at me with his green eyes. And he looks to his green room. As he looks to his green room. With green plants. And he quickly hides his green monitor. Uh, maybe some shade of... Gr yeah, you're right. Blue's a good choice. <laughs> Damn. The LGBT lights. Oh, shit. <laughs> Moving the slider all the way down, I find a nice shade of turquoise and lock it there. 
Much better. Are there any other changes you'd like you'd like to mess with on your monitor? Uh, you can usually change the size of the projections, but with how yours is set up, I'm n not sure. Maybe you could change the brightness? Other than the color and the size, though, nothing is really that important. Well, I mean, you can change the font usually, but I don't know if Tyr managed to recreate more than one font for you. Oh, nah, this is good. Well, you could always give it a test run, then. Test run? Well, you can do more with the monitor than just change its settings. Why not message someone? Oh, I think Marowyn did say you put your numbers in here. Let me try that. Uh, where's the messaging system? Oh, here, this is how you go back. As he swipes a paw up, taking you to a previous menu. Then press that top right button. Gratefully taking over, my contacts seem to be a simple list of their translated names. But who to message... Mm. Mm. Marowin or Marook? Marrow or Maru? Burrito friend or cop? Yeah, it isn't even a question. I bet Doc would like to know that I'm figuring out my new monitor. That will surprise him with the text. Quickly writing a short message, I hit send and wait. Although I don't have to wait long as Doc messages back almost immediately. Oh, Tucker, I'm glad to see every- Oh, Tucker, I'm glad to see everything is working well. Let me know if you find any errors and I'll have Professor Seno fix them when he can. And message me anytime. If you need to, that is. Chuckling to myself, I send a good night back as I close the projection and roll the phone over in my hands. It really is a broken piece of shit, but with this new monitor attached, it feels priceless. Well, I think what was actually saved on my phone was more priceless. I'm hoping Tyr can do something to make it work. Maybe he can at least find me a charger. D did it not work? What? Oh no, sorry bud. I'm still worried about everything on here. I might have lost. I, I really need to make sure it gets fixed. I I'm sure it will, bud. Don't worry about it right now. We can ask Tyr to look at it. And like I said, if he can't, I will. I give him a few solemn nods as I put it down for the night and lie back again. It must be getting late. Hey, Tucker. Hmm? Do you want to go to bed now? I know you have a lot to do tomorrow, and I think we might talk about the captain in the morning, yeah? <sighs> yeah, you're right. I just roll over and lazily throw the sheet over myself. Ah! He takes a moment to get up and even longer to walk away and flick off the lights. I hear him make a few adjustments on his own monitor before getting under the covers himself. I'm just scooting up in my chair. Uh, Tucker? Yeah? I know, uh, I know that uh, uh, a faint blue light pervades the room as his mind whirs. I hope that, uh, that you know th that you c can, c can... Ugh, I'm sorry. G good night. Good night. Oof. Day 11. While waking up by being prodded by cold mechanical fingers is one thing, waking up in a cold sweat is hardly better. I shoot up, almost hitting my head on the ceiling, and look at my hands before, snap before I snap my neck to look around the room, bleary-eyed and nervous. Fuck, I... I must have had an awful nightmare or something, but I can't remember a damn thing. The stress must be getting to me again. <sighs> I've been forgetting a lot of dreams recently, too. Hey, Rune, do you... Calling out to him, I realize that he's nowhere to be seen. It's time to drink water. A bit more perturbed, I throw it's my legs off the bed water. and hop into the bathroom. But he's not in there, either. It's time to Are drink water. Dreaming? That would explain the vague fear it's of time to drink water. In the empty room, but I'm pretty sure I'm awake. Well, I guess I should still get prepared. Quickly rinsing off, I throw on my best outfit. A shitty graphic tee and the jacket Rune gave me. Not really sure this will be enough to impress the captain, but it's the best I've got. I would really like to know where Rune is, or at least know if we'll have the, or if we'll have time to talk before my meeting. Pulling out my phone, I give the buttons another try before dejectedly activating the monitor. My eyes naturally drift to the top left, and I notice that there are some numbers ticking away. Wait. It's the time! Oh, that's great. How did I not notice that before? 
That's certainly helpful. It'll be nice not to have to ask every few marks. I managed to get my way back to the contacts and see Rune's name. Opening it, I sent him a quick text and asked if I should just wait here. He surprisingly promptly responds, Oh, morning, Tucker. I left early to get some food for us since, uh, well, dinner wasn't all that great. I'll be back soon. Please stay put. Chuckling to myself, I stow the phone and, lay and lie back down, staring at the pale, verdant ceiling. I really need this meeting to go well today. Maybe I'll be able to ask for some new clothes, or at least some leniency around the station. <sighs> it's fine. It's a step in the right direction. Unless she's mad at me. Oh no, I didn't even go to think about that, and all the ideas in my head! The station might have gotten off task a bit. The crew may have panicked a few times, and I might have completely ruined the schedule of at least three hundred day workers. Only like maybe half of that is my fault. Okay, maybe most of it is my fault, but I can't be blamed for it. I didn't ask to be here, and I really don't. Are you okay, bud? F fuck. How in the void are you so damn quiet? Did you just come in? Yeah, sorry. Are you okay? I'm... Yeah, sorry. I'm fine. Uh, you brought us some breakfast, right? Uh, oh, yeah! Helping him with the plates, we enjoy a quick meal before he gets geared up and sits down next to me. Uh, okay, so I, I thought of a few things that you should try that you should try to keep in mind during your meeting. Uh, I might be repeating myself a bit from last night, but that's because it's important. Let's see. There's a. Actually, if you don't mind, I have a question. Uh, oh, okay. What is it? Do you know how the captain got her job, anyways? Uh, not really. Really? You haven't heard anything? Well, I, I think I overheard a rumor once that she was the head of a big company before Sokna spotted out, and then she was given this position. B but I can't really say if that's true or not. I guess that's possible, but it's certainly not the most interesting answer. N now, where was I? Uh, oh, advice, right. When talking to her, make sure to answer anything she asks you the best you can. She's very busy, so I wouldn't want to waste her time. And then also make sure that you answer everything correctly so you don't have to repeat yourself. I have a feeling he's speaking from experience there. Uh, then you should make sure to address her as Captain. Well, if you need to say anything, that is... I don't know if she's going to ask you anything at all, really. I don't either. Tyr wasn't very specific about what would actually go on during the meeting. Well, I think you'll be okay. She probably just wants to meet you. He's probably right, but I still can't help but feel a bit worried. I'm definitely underprepared for all of this. I mean, I was told less than a day ago I was going to have this meeting. It's fine, I'll just... Bleh. Bleh. Freezing mid-thought, I reach into my pocket and pull out my phone. The monitor flicks to life by itself, and I see a new message from an unknown contact. Turning to Rune, he shrugs, and I open it. Tucker, your appointment with the captain will be at the 10th mark. Do not be late. Snapping my eyes to the corner of my phone, I check the time, only to see it's already 9.40. Well, no, was that her? We have to go. Now. Now? D -d Did you get your meeting time? Yeah. And it's in 20 minutes. I thought they'd give me more time. Rune looks panicked for a second before grabbing his things and fumbling his way to the door. Well, okay then, let's go. I, I think I know a shortcut. Nodding, I snag my notebook and shove it into one of my oversized pockets before heading out after him. He takes up his, <laughs> he takes up his usual gait as I lag behind just a bit. I'm certain I've never been this way, and before long, we're in front of a lone door at the end of the hall. Rune hits a few buttons and looks up while tapping his foot impatiently. Following his gaze, I see some icons above the door that seem to be counting down quickly. 
before my mind catches up, the door to the elevator opens. Rune rushes in and I warily follow behind. He unplugs a cable from his arm and inserts it into the panel before hitting a button. The door closes and I can feel our ascent begin as the elevator lurches upward. It's fortunately not a long ride as I feel Rune may have had something to do with that until the doors open and we step out. <laughs> the decor of the new hallway strikes me. I didn't expect to find aesthetic consideration here, but the carpet and plants tell me otherwise. I don't have much time to gawk, however, as Rune continues forward, guiding by, guided by a map on his monitor as he mumbles under his breath. It's about as empty up here as it is on the floors we came from. I kind of expected to see more Karen running around managing things. The few I do see don't seem to be dressed in anything particularly fancy. I really don't understand the dress code here. We keep trotting along, taking quick turns until we enter a hallway with a massive set of doors at the end. I can only assume this is our destination. Uh, however, the closer we get, the more I feel myself being dragged down. My head gets lighter and lighter. Stumbling over the soft carpet, I realize I'm still not ready for this at all! It's not Rune's fault, he only he's only met the captain a few times. Uh, but I really need more advice on how to deal with this. And couldn't I have been more, given more time to think about it? I mean, what am I supposed to say? I still haven't been given any answers, but I'm sure she doesn't want to hear that! This was all such a huge mistake, I... Bud... Almost tripping over myself, I come to a fast stop as we've almost reached the doors and Rune is trying to get my attention. Oh, uh, hey there! Uh... Bud. He keeps trying to meet my gaze, but I find myself looking away from his solemn eyes. He quickly pulls up his monitor before nudging me off to the side, behind a particularly tall planter. We still have a few minutes before you have your meeting. Do you need a minute? Are you okay? I I'm... No, I'm not! Here. Um... I will say this, because this, this applies to Tucker, but I feel like it also applies to uh, a bunch of people. It is okay to not be okay, and it is okay to not be ready. Rune, I'm not ready for this. I have no idea what to do or what to say. But, but we talked about this, right? Well, yeah, but still! That wasn't enough time! I'm sure you'll be fine, Tucker. How can you know? My question takes him by surprise and he can't seem to form a response. Not that he could have one anyways. There's nothing that... Tucker, I I've seen how you deal with people and I, I don't think you've realized it yet. When we first met, not in the vents, mind you, you were so kind... A even after getting to know me and the other Karen, you were so open and honest. When you got lost in the tunnels without me, you managed to get Kess and Milo to help you, and maybe even trust you. Tucker, you've been very c kind and caring. I don't think you realize how nice you are to be around. A and the captain will feel that too, I promise. He can't get the rest of his thoughts out as I almost tackle him to the ground in an embrace. My heart presses into my head presses into his chest as I damp the front of his jacket with burgeoning tears. I start to realize what I have done, and just as quickly as I grabbed him, I try to back off, only to be held close by one arm of flesh and another of metal. Both equally gentle and kind, I pull softly at the back of his uniform as I feel a single mechanical thumb rub into my back. I'm unsure how much time passes, but eventually I pull away. His expression is not of jubilation nor of fear; however, it's one of worry. Maybe not wholly, but in the underlying creases Emotional of his damn it! sags of his eyes, I can see it. He cares. He reaches over and straightens my collar before fixing his own and pulling up his monitor one last time. We should get moving, bud. There's not much time left. Right, yeah. And, uh, Rune? Thank you. He nods and we both open the large door together in two... A receptionist's office? Oh, by the fucking eye! That's a bit disappointing. Rune nervously paces over to the desk where a younger-looking female carry and eyes him up cautiously. Can I help you? Y yes, I'm here to help Tucker check into their meeting with the captain. 
She leans over the desk to take a better look at me before turning back to her monitor. I see. Well, I see that she does have an appointment coming up soon, so they can head inside and wait for her. She'll get to you when she's ready. She gestures to another set of double doors at the back of the room. Rune, quick Rune quickly thanks her and heads back over to me before walking towards the doors together. A call from behind stops us, however. Oh, uh, only they are allowed in. The captain's meeting only specified one individual. Feel free to wait out here, though. Uh, oh, I guess that makes sense. I didn't think about that. Will you be okay from here, Tucker? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Are you going to wait here for me? Uh, um, no, uh, if that's okay. Since you have your monitor now, you can just message me when you're done, right? I could come and get you. Oh, yeah, okay, I can do that. He gives me a few affirmative nods before I turn and head into the captain's office. Taking one last look behind me, I see he's still there offering me a small wave, to which I respond in kind. With our, final, with our goodbyes finalized, I head in. And this is... another waiting room. What? Well, the receptionist did say the captain will eventually get to me. At least there's a bench. Taking a seat, I feel surprisingly calm. What Rune said really did help, even if I still think this whole meeting is a bit much. At this point, I think I've convinced myself she just wants to see me in person. I don't know what answers I could provide for her that I haven't already told one of my guardians. Still, if she's taking time out of her apparently busy schedule to meet me, I should make the most of it. If nothing else, I can get a first-hand impression, er, impression of her. Maybe see why everything is so weird around here. Surely normal caring society doesn't always function this strangely, right? <sighs> I hope not. Checking the time on her monitor, she's definitely late to her own meeting. Pulling out my notebook, I think of jotting down what I can remember from this morning and starting a page of notes for the captain. As I begin writing, time seems to fall away. I know the days are longer here, but this feels like a waste of time, if not just a bit rude. It's been almost a mark since I got here, and I haven't heard anything come from either door. I peeked back out into the lobby, but it was still empty. And I did try the captain's door, but it seems to be locked. Not that I'd really attempt to barge into her office. There's a chance she's not as scary as everyone says, but I'd rather not gamble my life away on that assumption. With nothing else to do, I try to see if there's anything neat on my monitor. It's a bit of an ex exercise in frustration, but most of the translations are still a bit... Well, bad. I also can't tell how much power it has left, so I decide to stop. Seems as though I'm running out of paper in my notebook, too. Looking over the last few pages, I found most of them either have old doodles or are just covered in manic scrawlings. I've at least managed to write down everything I've needed so far, or at least what I can remember. I bump into a few other benches, but there's just nothing else here. I'd go ask the receptionist what's up, but I know she wouldn't be able to understand. Maybe I should go over and ask what, what I should go over what I should ask the captain. If I get a chance to ask anything, that is. Ugh. Uh, I should definitely see if I can get some new clothes and better access to the station. Okay, I don't know what to ask for. Fuck! Why is this taking so long? I'm betting Karen. This has to be some dumb test, right? Surely someone's watching me and making fun of me or something. But I can't see any cameras. Although, with how small this monitor is on my phone, I doubt I'd be able to spot anything. Sitting back down, I find myself tapping my leg like a caged animal just stuck. Again. It wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't such a familiar memory. It's just cruel at this point. Lying back on one of the benches, I've mostly gotten over my anxiety at this point. But it still sucks being forced to wait like this. Surely the captain has better things to do than waste my time, right? If she's so high and mighty, why doesn't she... A voice rings out over some unseen speaker. I'm sorry for the wait. Please come in. I see the door leading to her office creak open just a bit as if unlocked remotely. Well, so much for getting over my anxiety. Standing up slowly, I make my way over and cautiously peek inside. When I don't see anyone standing there, I head in. This is surprisingly tame for captain's office. I imagine there'd be a lot more, well, I don't know, trophies, statues, heads of past victims on spikes. The plants are a nice touch. 
One thing is missing for sure, though. I don't see the captain anywhere. Is she in an adjacent room, or... Ah, I'm glad you could make it. Tucker, was it? Please, come, sit down. I'll be right with you. An almost melodic voice rings out from somewhere in the room. Not young or joyful, but still soft and leveled. I'm not sure where it came from, but I can see some chairs by her desk, so I make my way over. Unsure of which chair to take, I nervously idle between them. They're not dangerous. You do know how to sit, right? Uh, yes. Taking the seat on the left is quite comfortable, if not a bit big. The hole at the back is for what I assume is one's tail is a bit awkward to sit around, but it's not too bad. Looking across the desk, I see her chair facing away from the door, backlit by a faint glow. She must be busy working on something. I'd say it's a bit rude to not face your guest, but I don't think it's really my place to impose. I mean, I doubt she'd even understand me. Wait. Fuck! How's this even going to work? Oh, damn it, why couldn't Rune just stay with me? This was such a stupid idea. I wonder if... I am sorry for the wait, Tucker. I was... dealing with something. Due to a scheduling conflict, however, this will have to be a joint meeting. Don't worry, though. I believe you know them quite well. Oh, uh, sure? Right. Well, hopefully she meant my guardian can come back. Although, why weren't they told beforehand? Shaking out of my confusion, I take this time to look over her desk as she's still not using it. Seems pretty normal. Although from everything I've seen so far, I imagine it has plenty of monitor screens ready to pop out at any given moment. I'm surprised to see a cup with some pens in it, as well as another with something steaming over it. I wonder if that's... something caffeinated. God, I hope so. It's nice that she has some plants back against the wall. That's kind of most of the decor. It's a pretty bland room otherwise. I'm almost shocked out of my chair when I hear the door suddenly open behind me. Peeking around, I turn to see... Ah, I'm so glad you could join us, Tear. Tear? That's not someone I know quite well. I barely know him. Surely she wasn't being fa facetious, right? Captain, I am always at your bark and call. But surely you could schedule my meetings more ahead. Ahead of... We lock eyes and he looks just as confused as I am. Um, am I interrupting something? No, not at all. Please, do sit down. If you wish to finish your meeting with Tucker, I'd be more than happy to... Sit. Down. Her voice does not raise, nor does her surprisingly calm tone change. But somehow the words strike like lightning, and I can see it in tear just as I can feel it in my spine. He takes a moment to adjust himself before taking the seat beside me. She still does not turn to us, not even in the presence of Tear. I'm starting to think this is just how she deals with everyone. Are you well? It's been almost two weeks since we've spoken, you know. I am. Thank you. Of course, of course. I think I hear monitor sounds coming from the other side of the chair. Now, I'm sorry that I had to call you here on such short notice. It's quite alright. And I'm also sorry to hear that you seem to have damaged the Maron again. That's not entirely... And... I'm sorry that you seem incapable of following simple orders. The ma... And... I'm sorry that you seem to fail at the most simple of tasks. Is that all, Captain? No. Stay seated. Should... Should I be here for this? I'm getting nervous just sitting here. Would you please explain the results of your recent experiment? Seno... His name strikes out like a knife, a far cry from her usual delivered tone. I've sent you the report multiple times now. Was that not enough? Tell me again. I want to hear it from you. He looks over at me, maybe not worried, rather just annoyed. I would prefer not to speak about it in front of... in front of our... guest here. Hm. <laughs> what does that mean? He barely acknowledges my reaction. Tear... I did not ask for excuses. Please, give me the report again. He sighs and pinches his brow. I hear more screens flick to life as I assume she's pulling up various records and documents to review. Is she testing him? I'm shocked to see Tyr being treated like this. Of course. At the ninth mark exactly 11 days ago, the Maron was to undergo a test of some new proprietary parts. It was a routine experiment to see if recent upgrades would change our results in any way. We were... Wrong. Wrong? Yes. Wrong. Tear, what you just said to me, your captain, had some falsehoods in it. 
I know what happened. I want to hear you say it. I have to stop from sinking into the chair. Now I really feel like I shouldn't be here. The room goes cold and I hear the telltale sound of fingers tapping on metal. Tear grumbles out a few complaints before continuing. You are correct, Captain. The test was indeed not small, nor was it entirely scheduled. I must have forgotten. An accident, no doubt. Please, continue. He takes another look at me before continuing. Why can't he explain this in front of me? I barely understand what's being said around me most of the time anyways. This is no different. Of course. It was meant to be a small test, but the Maron started putting out exponentially more power than expected. While the station may, in theory, be able to withstand it, we were not prepared. Our equipment was not ready, and the support structures were not fully extended. Ah, uh, see? That sounds like the report I read. Please. I believe what happened next, but elucidate me. When the test began, all of our recording equipment was immediately sent offline, as well as some of the localized crew. It seems that the hum was far more dangerous than we expected it to be. Hum? Yes? I'm asking what it is, Tyr. I've explained it to you before. Have I not? Then explain it again. Of course. It's a combination of radiation, heat, electromagnetic discharges, gravitational fluxes, and other generally dangerous forces. It's hard to contain and dangerous to be exposed to. Um, where was I? Ah, right. Afterwards, the Maron continued to exert more power than we predicted. The core overheated to a point that where we're still trying to check for damage, as well as find any missing parts. I remember Rune said the Maron manages to provide the station with most of its power, but do they not know how to use it? Didn't they just build the damn thing? And... And that's it. Everything after that was detailing repairs and cooling down the circuits. Along with scheduling structural repairs and, well, a few impromptu medical exams. Oh dear. I hate it when you do this. I asked for the full report, please. There it is again. Her voice slips from a melancholic chime into biting words, and I can see it's had its desired effect on Tear. He takes a second to compose himself as he swallows some accumulated fear down his throat. He looks at me one last time before responding. Captain, I must ask one more time. Must the subject be here for this? Surely you could at least grant me some leniency. What did you just call me? Are you going to give me the report or not? It's just that I would rather they not be here. Tell me, Tear. Why is that? Actually, tell them. You can't be serious. Am I ever not? Syria, I... Professor Sono, you will finish your report, or so help me. I will finish it for you. <clears throat> and trust me, I don't leave out details. I can't believe what's going on here. Between how the captain truly deals with everyone, how Tyr's treating me, and how worried he is just to talk about this accident, he looks shocked as he tries to find some other excuse. But either out of fear or devotion, he continues his report. Uh, of course, Captain Bell. My apologies. When the morning test occurred, something went wrong. We're still not sure what it was, and no, that is not another accident. We just do not know. After that, we couldn't stop the process, and it started to descend. Descend? Once the core was below the median, it was too dangerous to call off and we had to let it continue. Or risk damaging it beyond repair. Beyond repair? And here I thought you were an expert on the thing. The only one. He did build it, right? This is what he called his life's work, I thought, and he doesn't know how it works or how to fix it? What are they- what are they doing with the damn thing? Uh, I am. Once the core dropped to the internal safety limit, the rest of our devices went offline. We were unable to record anything else or take any footage. We were still not even sure why it stopped at all. After the test, we were able to see what numbers were estimated on the machines before they broke. And they were... astronomical. It just proves further that we must keep trying. I know that we can get it right if I... Yes, yes. If you have more time. Tear. As your captain and friend, 
What you have done is amazing. I mean that. But it's also dangerous and completely irrational. We still have no idea what that machine is or how it even works, and I... We're so close, Captain. I know that we can... Do not interrupt me. Tear. I know this is important to you, and I know what it could mean for Alrain. But please, temper your expectations. You're working with something that even the eye cannot predict. For now, what is that? <sighs> Captain, the energy outputs we recorded, we recorded were comparable to that of a star. Please, I need to finish my work. Do not beg, Tear. I haven't the authority nor with wherewithal to shut your little basement project down. By the void, I know it's the only reason we're still floating. It's not my decision to make. However, he perks up a bit as she continues to talk. Your report has, well, it's caused some issues back home. Not so much due to your fail, it's more from the accidental successes you seem to have found. or stolen. Mind you, both are fascinating. But it has caused quite a stir. Your new research seems to have worked for one thing, Professor. All eyes are on the station once again. Were they not already? I thought the Ikoriad 2 was like a jewel of scientific progress. Maybe I've read into it a bit much, but from how everyone talked about it, I figured this was some sort of floating miracle maker. I take it that news of the recent test has already reached unwanted ears? Tear. They're our boss. They're your boss. Of course they know what happened here. Tear has a boss? Actually, why is that what I'm focusing on? Alright, we're just going to, like, take a minute. I think we're just going to do, like, the entire update tonight. I'm, I'm taking a minute. I'm taking a bit. Gonna let the ad run. Alrighty. I prefer to think of it as a partnership. Well, something of the sort. Yes, well, your partner has decided to send a crew from Heron. What? What the hell? What? What? Or to come and investigate. They'll be here within the week. D did I just... What was that? Ugh, what the... Uh, by the time my hand reaches my head, the pain is already gone. Looking up, disoriented, I notice a glance from Tear before he responds to the captain. Wait, from Heron? By the void, he's not coming, is he? No, not that I'm aware of. But I would be careful. I'd hate to have something like that on my station. Uh, of course, Captain Bell. She lets out a labored sigh as I hear a few screens open and close from behind her desk. More fingers dance on cold metal as we wait for her to make her final judgment. Tear seems to be pondering what to do next, and I'm just left confused as to why she needed him to t tell her all of this. Although I have a feeling it wasn't so much as for her as it may be for me. But why? All right, thank you, Tear. Your report seems to be in order. As I had expected... Of course. Is that all you need from me? I believe so. He starts to stand up before I hear another monitor flick to life and the captain speaks up once again. Oh, actually, I believe there's one more thing you had to report to me, correct? Excuse me? Yes. I believe it's sitting right next to you. Huh? What? What do you mean, captain? He sits back down and a wave of unease seems to set in over his small frame.
Ooh, ooh. Oh, dear. I am not in the mood today. Finish the damn report. What else happened on that eventful morning? He seems to be squirming in his seat, but he knows her patience is thin. His gravely pitch is laden with the surprising sadness I wouldn't have expected. Uh, it would seem as though that was the morning our guest arrived as well. N no! Yes, indeed they did. He swallows and nervously cups his paw on his lap. Uh, at the tenth mark, right after the Maron hit a critical power threshold, the alarms went off in the research sector, and Tucker was found wandering the halls. All footage of the event was lost through the hum produced during the test. Now, I've not put much stock in the old faiths myself, but doesn't that feel too much like a coincidence to you? It is. Hard to ignore the empirical evidence. You are correct. Please tell me this isn't what I think it is. I already know it. I don't want to hear it. I can't. You're saying... Starting to see why Tyr wouldn't want to talk about this, but I can't believe it. So, would you say that you are responsible for whatever happened to our guest here? Wait, you can't be serious! Tyr, we have hypothesized that when the Maron passed the threshold, something happened. During that time, vast amounts of energy went unaccounted for in our readings. The readings we recovered, at least. Gravitational fluxes were coming from the keel of the station, and, well, please... Don't say it. Continued here. As there are uncertainties regarding critical functions of the Maron, we cannot say for sure. But it is most likely that... That the reason Tucker is here is our fault. Yes. Uh, I... And you have no feasible idea why this would happen, correct? It's possible it was just an accident, but we cannot tell if the vast amount of energy being created is just a side effect of its true purpose. Or something else. We're still looking into it. Of course you are. You've been looking into it for decades. Well, one more question for our guest here. Captain, I... I don't... Tear? Don't be rude. It's just one more question. To say the room has gone silent would be incorrect, but I could not tell over the ringing in my ears. It's ever-present and seems to block out everything but the words that leave the professor's lips. Tear? Yes, Captain? Do you think that there is a way for them to get back home? Ah, shit! Getting raided, okay. Um. Unlocking the truth... What? Uh, should I be concerned about that? Yeah, hello, raiders. Silence blurs into a painful static as I can read his lips before he even utters the words. What the hell? We are at... F oh, okay. Well, we appreciate the raid. We appreciate it. Silence blurs into a painful static as I can read his lips before he even utters the words. I just have to let it wash over me as he dictates my fate. I don't know. Slowly looking over, I see he's brought a paw to his forehead and seems to be trying to steady himself. Is he... is he distraught over this? I sit back in my chair, dejected. I have to stop myself from shaking as the words resonate more and more in my mind. I don't know. That's it? That's the be-all and end-all. My life was torn away from me and is now at the whims of some old man and his broken machine. Oh, miserable of happy. Welcome all to our little slice of Twitch life. <laughs> oh, miserable of happy. I have a feeling it's not even the end. That there's ever more to come. 
Can you go back, please? I... I don't know what to say. Words fall flat on deaf ears as I sink further into the chair. Small drops of water accumulate around my eyes. I don't know. Light years from home and that is my fate. I don't know. They keep talking, but the sound fade away but the sounds fade away under a chorus of whimpers and gasping breaths. Why is it so hard to face a truth I already knew? I knew that this would be the end of my road. There is no going back from this. Hearing some shuffling, I look up to see the professor straightening his tie and getting up to leave. Uncovering my face from my oversized sleeves, make an attempt to rejoin the one-sided conversation. Seno, before you go... Yes, Captain? As I see you're responsible for this mess, I'm putting you in charge of fixing it. Um, Captain, I've already completed the neural AI to allow for two-way communication. You know that, right? I am aware... I meant a more permanent solution. I know your time is already spent hoveling down in the bowels of my ship, but now with your recent findings of success and your imprisonment of our guest here, you are responsible for fixing it. I'm... The success you are referring to was incidental. We have no way of... Tear. You are in no position to give excuses. I understand that, Captain. But we don't even know what we did. All that changed was... Hmm... Care to comment, Tear? Hiya. He looks at me one last time. An inscrutable expression sees past me and through the cosmos behind me. A thousand yard stare pales in comparison to the nothingness of space. Aw, oh, shit. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow. Hang on. I'm going to check something. Seriously. Thank you for the follow. It's very appreciated. Yeah, it's greatly appreciated. Thousand yards stare pales in comparison to the nothingness of space. No, I, I mean, of course, Captain. I'm not sure what caused the event that brought Tucker here. Hiya. But I will do my best to figure it out. And fix it. One more rogue side-eye glances my way. If it can be done... See to it that it is. Now get out. He sighs as if the weight of the world's dropped off of his shoulders. He turns, offers a small respectful nod to the chair as well as to me, and slowly walks out the door. Each footstep sounds a mile away until the door slams behind me, and I am alone, with an empty chair. Silence grips the room, except for the heartbeat bleeding through my ears, and the soft whir of uncaring machines. I should have known there would never be something great behind it. No driving force nor burning reason, just a joke. A cosmic joke played out across time and space. My time, and who knows how much space. I let a stuttered size, I do a bad job of holding it together in the oversized office chair. I don't know what to think of Tyr either right now. He's done so much for me, but if he truly brought me here, can I even see what he's done as kindness? Or just necessity. But he did it nonetheless, and without it, I wouldn't be able to talk at all. Isolation would be the end of me. It was hard enough once. He almost looked sad there at the end. My mind is racing too much. I need to think on this later. Clearly, I'll have time. Fuck, I should have asked him about my monitor. Alright. I can't. We need the cute squad. We need the cute squad. Tucker, enjoy the cute squad. We got... We got... Uh, Apollo, Rune, June, Damien, Xavier, Lyle, Benji, and Nem. I'm gonna leave that there for a bit. I'm still isolated, aren't I? 
All right, I should be ready for our meeting in just a moment, Tucker. I am sorry about the wait. I do hope hearing some of that may have helped in some regard. I doubt any of this is particularly easy for you. It's... whatever. I just... This is dumb. I'm talking to a fucking chair. A waste of my time. No one here can fucking understand me. Can't understand you? No. I wouldn't be a very good captain if I wasn't able to understand what happens on my ship, would I? No, I suppose not. Wait. Did she just... Oh, fuck. Oh, my dear guest. In a single motion, she turns around and I'm first blinded by a sharp red point. Only for it to be drowned out as the wall behind her falls away in an instant. I can understand everything. Ooh, that is terrifying. I see why this is her office now. Her gaunt face is in stark contrast to her stunning red eyes as a wicked grin peels across her muzzle. I have a feeling she was waiting for that. Even from here, I can see that she's massive. She must almost be as tall as Merowyn, and what's up with her arm? Is she plugged directly into her chair? And is that... Oh my god. A single point in a sea of darkness. An impossibility that I must stare down and take as... What am I thinking? Have I... Have I heard that somewhere before? Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Captain Bell... First Commander of the Ikoriod 2, Director of All Interplanetary Relations, and something of an accomplished pilot. <laughs> but you may call me Captain. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, Tucker. Uh, I... Uh, thank you? It's uh, a pleasure to meet you, too. Her thin lips curl into a short smile, and I'm shocked to see how genuine it looks. I didn't expect her to have such a calming presence. Before I move on, I would like to state that I am sorry for Professor Seno's behavior. He might be a genius, but I always found his better half more amenable. Better half? Does she mean Merowyn? Probably. Might just be a translation issue. No, oh, it's, um, it's fine. He's helped me so far. Even if he, uh, well, I suppose you know. Yes, I do. We don't need to ruminate, it, ruminate on it any further. Not now. I'd actually love if we could move on to the more pertinent topic. You. Of course! What would you like to know? Alright, I think we can get rid of Cute Squad. Honestly, I'm just going to say it. She no She looks like she knows what the fuck she's doing. She strums her fingers across the desk as a red light shoots down some lights built into the cables. Tilting her head, she scrutinizes my minute form as I wait as patiently as I can in the stupid chair. I've read the reports, reviewed the logs, and drawn some inferences, yet I'm still curious. What are you doing here? And I don't mean that wholly literally, nor wholly metaphorically. I'm curious what could be going through the mind of something so far from home. Captain Bell slays. Something that had everything taken from it. What I see before me now has only been explained to me through text and blurry images. And that's not nearly enough for me. I want to know what you are. I want to know everything. What do you mean? She simply grins and leans back in her chair, her one arm slowly tapping the desk impatiently. If I didn't know better, I'd think she's enjoying this. A predator before the kill. You're a fascinating thing, despite it all. First contact served with a dictionary. A guest perfectly able to live and commune with us. Is that not strange? What I said to Seno is true. I'm not one for religion. But this? It does make me think. She takes a solemn glance back at the eyes and stares down at us with uncaring solar fury. Well, your answer? Uh, I... In the few fatal moments before she strikes, 
My mind races to find something to satiate her, un her hunger, and yet, through it all, I come up blank. Blank after blank after blank page turning in my mind. No story nor anecdote to tell. No one thing that drives me. Nothing except that star and the even brighter eyes burning through me. I am nothing. Hmm. Nothing. I don't think you'll find any answers with me. Only more questions. I am far from home and yet, even there I felt distant. I can't tell what you want because I don't know myself. And somehow through it all, I am just me. Which is to say, I do not know what I am. Sharp seconds pass as a horrifying grin appears on her muzzle, eyes now laser focused on every iota of my being. Oh, you are interesting. Her lame eye twitches as she has a hard time keeping it open, only for her smile to eventually curl into a far more gentle grin. Good, well, I'm glad to see you're living up to expectations. I'd hate for th all this to end with paperwork. Unsure of what she means, I simply offer a nervous nod. Although, I must say... She has to stifle a chuckle as she speaks. You've written yourself to be quite the blank slate. I'm sure that will change. In time. It's... Something to work on, yeah. There's nothing wrong with a blank slate. We all have to start somewhere. Something of worth may be inscribed upon you yet. To inscribe upon it would, d would change it forever, though. Have you not been changed already? I can't answer her. Mainly because she's right. And the expression on her face shows it. And nevertheless, it seems as though you will have time to find yourself. Don't worry. I'm patient. I'm not sure I believe that. But I give her a knowing nod just to be safe. By the void, this might just be worth our time. If I had known aliens would be so amiable, I would have signed up to be an explorer, not... Hmm. I, for one, expected first contact to involve a plague or bullet through the back of my skull. Well, I could have always. Cut off by some unseen force, she raises her hand to her chest and... What? How many goddamn monitor models are there and why does mine suck? She must have caught me staring as the orbs fly back to her chest with a theoretical snap. Heh, <laughs> you seem... Interested? Those are your monitors? They're very impressive. It's hard to even attempt to act casual about this, but I try to restrain myself knowing the environment right now. They're a bit gaudy, I know, but it's necessary with this whole situation. She raises her shoulder and the mess of cables sluggishly reacts, only being lifted an inch or so. They must be heavy. I imagine. Well, that's enough to sate my curiosity. Let's get down to business. Business? Yes, of course. Well, I would love to just chat. We need to discuss your new role as a member of our prestigious crew. Uh, I'm sorry, did I miss something? I do not believe so. I was just about to assign you to your, assign you your new job as a member of the working staff of the Ikoriad 2. I, uh... Uh, okay? It's simply a formality. Under the working code of the station, all personnel must be assigned a job, lest they be reassigned. Oh, so what am I, uh, being assigned? Yes, that is the question, isn't it? She reviews some things on her monitor as she mumbles to herself. A job, huh? I guess it makes sense. Kinda. I figured my job was like, subject of research or lab rat. I'm pretty sure people got paid to be tested on back home. Wait. Am I going to be earning space money for doing this? That'd be kinda cool. Although, due to the fact I'm on some weird part-military, part-scientific research vessel, I'm not so sure where I'd spend it. I'd wonder what a carrying mall would even look like. The captain clears her throat and snaps the screen away once more. From what I've been told, you've proven yourself to be at least somewhat helpful to have around. So I can spare you from any truly tedious position. Positions. Of course, you'll still need to help out with Dr. Senna's research, as well as whatever the professor comes up with, but... Beyond that, you have some choice. Mind you, it's a choice between working as an assistant or waiting for another position to open, which may take a while. It seems like doing nothing is a choice, but that's surprisingly not very enticing. Although I feel like I should learn more about this assistant role first. What would that entail, the assistant position? Hmm, what you would expect, really. Taking notes, running errands, whatever they need from you during work hours. Of course, that's if they can make time for you. You aren't working for Carrie and that find themselves glut with free time. 
Yeah, I've kind of noticed that. Hmm. Well, I... It doesn't seem too different from what I've been doing. And besides taking some more notes, I doubt any of them would push me too hard. Not that it would kill me to work a bit harder. Ugh, now is not the time for these thoughts. I might as well. It sounds better than doing nothing all day. And besides, maybe it'll finally be a job I can find some enjoyment in. I'll take the assistant role, if that's possible. Of course. It should be manageable. I'll be sure to have the schedule and an overview of your responsibilities sent to you and your guardians. Oh boy. I'm sure Kess is not going to be happy when they hear about this. Think of this more as an official label for what you've already been doing, but with a few more rules and benefits. Anyways, it seems you already have some experience at this, and the uniform to match as well. I notice her staring at my chest, and I hazard a glance, only to remind, only to be reminded of my stupid intern t-shirt. Ugh. At least she thinks it's funny. Oh, I see. Well, that's a relief. But I'll be sure to do what I can to help them, Captain. I channel my inner Maruk and offer a sloppy salute. I think it's enough as she chuckles and continues talking. Speaking of, though, I heard your guardians have had a hard time finding a uniform for you. I thought it might be pertinent to let you know that arrangements have been made for you and your new uniform should be ready for you as soon as tonight. My new uniform? Clothes, human. I've managed to prepare a set of clothes for you. Oh, thank you, Captain! That's too kind! It's simply a necessity. No one should be out of uniform if they can help it. I offer a stiff nod and decide not to tell her about every time I've seen Maruk out of uniform. But new clothes sound great! I hope I can keep my jacket, though. I'm not sure an assistant is allowed to wear... whatever this is. I might just wear it anyway. Now, of course. After managing your uniform, the next step would usually be housing, but it seems that has already been accounted for. May I ask how that's working out for you? Oh, it's been great! R uh, Director Tiran has been very helpful in adjusting me to life aboard the station. I haven't had any issues sharing a room so far. And you've become accustomed to his work habits? I know he's particularly dedicated to his post. Yes, it's been fine so far. His crew is very kind, too. I try to freeze as the words leave my lips. I'm not sure if she was supposed to know that or not. Her expression stays as unreadable as ever. I've yet to meet them myself, but I've heard good things. Right! Well, if you ever feel the need to room alone, I'm sure can be set up for you. Mind you, I'm not sure if there are any other rooms in that area of the ship left, but something could be arranged. Oh, really? I guess I was mainly rooming with them to ensure that I would be safe and everything. But I also don't mind it. They've been kind to me so far. I see no reason to be alone anymore. That's a kind offer, Captain, but I'll stay where I am for now. Thank you. Just know the offer stands. Now, let's see. You've been assigned your new position, given housing and clothing. Ah! I know that you've managed to visit a few parts of the station already but with your new position you'll be granted access to the rest of it most of it anyways wait i'm no longer restricted to the executive suites and labs well as of now yes you are once i finish some forms i will graciously extend your access to other parts of the station it's only right for a working member of the crew after all Th thank you that's great to hear although it's a bit surprising if i may wasn't the reason to limit my movement for my safety and the safety of the crew <laughs> you do listen. Yes, it was. Once I fill out these papers, though, a station-wide announcement will go through and inform everyone of your new status as a member of the crew, which will grant you certain immunities you are not currently afforded. Uh, oh, okay. And besides, limiting your guardians to the confines of the laboratory floors is asinine. They have other places they need to be. I would still advise you to traverse with them if possible, but once you have your identification card, even I can't stop you from going where you wish. <laughs> I feel like you could probably stop me. Oh, I very much could. She says with a cutting grin. But watching you scurry about the station has been far more enjoyable than not. I'm just cracking my back. Right. Um, Captain, may I ask a question? Ha! <laughs> of course. What is it? I've only heard rumors so far, but I was curious. What effect has my existence had on the crew? I've heard there have been some incidents of tardiness. But other than that, I really don't know. Are you worried? No, I... <sighs> yes. I think I am. Good. You should be. 
As dangerous as you may or may not be, I doubt any of it would protect you from a carrying. I don't- you don't have the, hmm, stature for it. But as I said, after today you will just be another member of the crew, so walk with some pride if you can. Sure. I don't think I entirely understand it, but everything she's saying seems pretty much in line with what I could want. <sighs> Getting new clothes, more access to the station, and something to do! Despite the rough start, this meeting is really working out. Um, is there anything I should know before you make the announcement tomorrow? Like, advice or maybe some kind of guidance? Advice? You've managed well enough so far without me. You'll figure it out. I think I'd prefer a manual to that kind of encouragement, but it'll have to do for now. With another slight jolt, she pulls out her monitor and eyes up some new message. Her eyes quickly scan it for its contents, and she releases a small sigh. It seems we're going to have to cut this meeting short. Time has become rather tight. I do hope that's okay. Yeah, sure. Of course, Captain... Yes, Captain, will suffice. Okay, fine. This meeting has been everything I needed it to be. Now I just need to message Rune and I can get out of here. While we have this last moment, please, if you would, do you mind indulging me in the last question? Quickly putting my phone away, I turned back to her. She's partially turned to the window behind her now. The star. What do you think of it? Tilting my head up to face it head on, I stare at it, fully engrossed in its solidarity. I only had so much time to stare earlier, but now with my eyes fully set on it, it's really something. The nothingness of it all is far more pronounced than I ever would have imagined. Void doesn't do it justice. I don't think a word exists for such solitude. Even its pale color seems to bend and twist under fall of a lie. It's something to behold for sure. Well? It's... I think it's just lonely. Calling out for something. Or someone to hold on to. She turns her massive chair to stare at it, the cable's almost becoming taut as she strains just enough to get a view. Seconds pass like marks until... Ha! <laughs> How needlessly poetic! A star can just be a star and nothing more! But I like it. I keep thinking, I expect another answer next time we meet. Uh, sure. Yes, Captain. Good. May I ask one more thing before I go? Make it fast. What do you think about it? Surely it's not just some star to you. She doesn't turn to face me, but it doesn't take her too long to respond. Perhaps I only wish it were. I feel I may be overstepping my bounds a bit there. Seeing as she's not yelling at me, I think I might be good. But what does she mean by that? <sighs> I dare not ask another question. Not today. Although, okay, I like it. Maybe think about it. I hope you have another answer next time we meet. A sharp red glow lights up from behind her chair as it swivels towards me. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Okay, I went too far! Good to know! <laughs> I was just uh, kidding! You don't have to... <laughs> you really are worth keeping around. Very well. I expect much from you. I hope you do not disappoint. Uh, I don't intend to. I don't intend to. Captain! There we go. Now I need to go, but let me walk you out. Wait, can you get out of that thing? I was beginning to think she just lived in that chair. She raises her arm to the tangle coming out of her shoulder, and I hear the sound of gas, sounds of gas escaping a pipe. The cords glow a bright, furious red before a scraping sound can be heard as she pulls the piece from her body and drops it with a resounding thud. So much for being fragile. Standing up now, I take in her full height, and by the eye, she is almost as tall as Marowyn. Not to mention that piece on her hip. It looks far meaner than the one I saw being wielded by those guards. From under the desk, she pulls out a jacket that looks similar to Maruk's, if not a bit fancier. She whips it on effortlessly and starts adjusting the various straps and latches. While she gets ready, I take this time to message Rune to come and pick me up. Looking up from my phone and focusing on her shoulder, I do see that it looks like she could have an arm like Rune's. But unless she has an extra arm under that desk too, I'm unsure as to where it would be. Noticing me staring, she pipes up. Oh, excuse me. Before reaching under the desk again and pulling out what looks like a flag or a bandana of some kind and... Ah, uh, well, I guess that works. Please, the door. Huh? Oh, right. Heading to the doors to her office, I open them for her and we enter the lobby. She offers a single nod to the receptionist and seems to start packing up for the day as we head out. I have to head to another meeting now, but I hope that today was... 
enlightening for you. It... it was something. Thank you, Captain. You'll be fine getting back to your room. Oh no, I'm just going to wait here. Rune is going to come and pick me up. Good. I will message you when I'm ready to meet again, Tucker. I look forward to it. With an understanding nod, she turns and walks away. Her even pace quickly takes her down the hallway and out of sight, leaving me waiting for my guardian. It's not so bad here. The plants are nice. Oh, my back. Almost half a mark passes before I hear the familiar sound of a particular director running to come pick me up. He's going to fall and hurt himself one of these days. Eventually, he turns the corner and leans up against one of the nearby walls to catch his breath. You okay there, bud? M me? What about you? <laughs> I'm not the one who ran here. I know that, but the meeting! How's the meeting? Uh, I think it went well. It was a bit confusing. She kept the conversation moving so fast, I lost track of what was happening at some points. What did she ask about? D did she yell at you? Uh, no, I don't think she yelled at me, per se, but there was some yelling. Seeing my answer only confused him, I decided to skip it for now. But she asked me some of the questions you guys have asked me before, actually. How did I get here? What am I doing here? That kind of thing. Uh, oh, I thought we already gave her those in our reports. Uh, unless your answer has changed. Did you remember something? Nah, I wish. I just said the same thing I always do. I can't tell if she was really happy to hear that, though. Probably not, but that's okay. But it's okay. You got through it. Did she say anything else? We talked about a lot of stuff, bud. I'm not sure we have time right now, but she did mention one thing. Yeah, what is it? She said I'm your assistant now? Something about some rule that requires me to have a job while here or something? As I keep talking, I notice a familiar glare in his eyes. My words are no longer reaching him, and now I'm left wondering where he got, when he got lost. Rune? Buddy? Are you still with me? Offering a small wave, he snaps out of it and scratches the back of his head. Uh, oh, sorry. I was just, um, thinking. Uh, assistant? Well, I already have been calling you that, kinda. Just, uh, whew. Kes is not gonna like that. Oh man, was I right about that? Shit, well I hope they don't take it too hard. It's not like I'm taking their actual job, right? I guess I'll have to ask later. But, uh, that's funny. I'm not as, uh, versed on the laws of the station as maybe I should be. I wonder why you'd needed to be given a job just to stay around. I think it was more along the lines of making it clear that I'm a crew member, giving me an official label. Or something. Okay! Yeah, I don't really get it either. <laughs> Well, uh, most crew members live on the upper decks. So are you, uh, leaving already? It's fine if you are. I just... I'll help you move your, uh, backpack if you need to. Nah, I told her I'd like to stay with you for now, if that's okay. Yeah, th that's great. Uh, it's good. It's very good, uh-huh. <laughs> Alright, I'm glad to hear it. How about we head out, though? I don't think we need to really be here anymore. Hmm? He cocks his head as he repositions himself against the wall. Rune, we can leave now. We don't have to hang out here in the hallway. Uh, oh, right. Y yeah, let's head out and... Ah, uh, Director Tyron. Late again, I see. He almost slips and falls down the wall as he hears the voice coming from behind him. He slowly turns his head as much as he can to face the captain, who I see now has returned and is standing by her door. I had only come back to pick something up, but what a stroke of luck running into you. I've been wondering where you had crawled off to. Professor Seno has been harassing me that his toys keep breaking. Can you see to it that they get fixed? Right, you're the quiet one. Well, get Della on it. Y yes, kept And director, find it in yourself to address me correctly next time we meet. Am I understood? He barely... E Eeks out a nod as he finally stands up straight and faces her. Good. Dismissed. Rune manages a shaky salute, but she's already giving me a gentle nod on the way into her office. I have to tug on his loose jacket to get him to finally stop staring at the door. The tension releases from his body as he sighs and rubs his face. We're going to leave off here tonight. I'm, I'm just going to split it up into multiple days. I'm just going to split it up into a multiple day update day. Ah, my neck. 
yeah, it was a lot. It was a good a lot, but it was a lot. Anyways, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.